Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research. It's uh, Wednesday morning and uh, I'm going to do some uh, testing here today. I've been basically what my ultimate goal is, is to be able to uh, um, charge up capacitors and then eventually run a charging system that re vitalizes uh, car batteries that runs inverters and then the inverters can run your house so i've been doing some testing here today and i've uh, found out some interesting anomalies um i'll show that to you in a minute uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel and if you're new bottom right hand corner and also in the description i got my patreon and i also got bitcoin there if you want to donate a couple of bucks or become part of my patreon stuff uh, you'll be able to get some uh, exclusive uh, information through there as well. And that's for uh, our patrons. But I still reveal a lot of stuff here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, we're almost at 900 subscribers. We're growing. We got almost 50,000 views a month. That's totally amazing. Totally, totally amazing. So anyways, what I've done is... I've opened up the third, uh, the middle spark gap, so I've got a lot of power coming in. And I've gone back to this coil, the original coil that I started with. This one seems to be a winner. Yeah, it, it seems to be putting out the highest power. So, um, yeah. Um, so my goal is here today is to charge up capacitors. Now, I'm finding at the high voltage and high ferret rate, which this one is, this is... Tw uh, can go up to 16 volts at 500 ferret. It seems to be too much for the system. So I'm working out ways on how to charge those up. That's my goal is to charge up super caps. But if I'm using the regular electrolytic high voltage capacitors, some of these are rated at like 63 volts. I'm finding I'm able to charge these guys up really, really easy. So I'm going to show you a low test. So what I've done is I've shorted out the caps. I think there's only like a high uh, 5.5 uh, volts residual power that's sitting in there right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see if I can get my cell phone holder here. Uh, no, that's not going to work. All right. Well, what I'm going to have to do is this. All right. So we're hovering around 0.6 volts, so half a volt that's sitting in the caps right now. I'm using a four watt light bulb as a load because you have to have a load on it, otherwise the power won't get drawn into the capacitors. So when it gets up to 30 volts, what will happen is you'll get a spike surge because the capacitance of the capacitors is totally full, it can't hold anymore. So what's gonna happen is it will discharge in a big flash coming out of the bulb. So every time it hits 30 volts, it's going to go that high and it's going to flash. So I want to demonstrate that for you. And I want to take note on how fast it's charging. That's also very important. So I'm going to boost it up here real fast. Okay, I got at 9 volts. Now look at this. Look how fast it's charging. We're already at 13 volts. Now the light's starting to come on now. 17. Look how fast it's charging. We're at 20 volts right now. In a matter of a few seconds. Now keep in mind there's not that much capacitance there, but the fact that it is charging fast. That's a good sign. That's showing me that there's current going in at a pretty fast rate. We're at 26 volts. When it hits 30, it'll flash. Watch. 28. 29. Boom. Flash. Sorry, 29 volts. <laughs> so it drops down to about 23 and then goes back up again. It's going to hit 29, 27, 28 flash there we go so i'm showing now you can see i got the three i got six spark gaps going now when i shut it off watch okay system's off now it's just discharging now look the light's still on Oh, 
a lot of ozone in the room right now. Wow, tons of ozone in the room. So I'm, I'm showing that I've got current. I'm showing that the rate of the uh, voltage increase in the capacitors goes up quite, quite fast. So I would say less than a minute, it was already discharging. Even though that, okay, keep in mind, there's not that much capacitance there. It's the fact that I'm able to move the current from a high voltage source through a full wave bridge rectifier and dump it into ca uh, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors. So I'm showing that I'm getting substantial amount of current going into those. See, it's still running. Like the it's not fully illuminated, but it's illuminated to the point where it's pulling a load off those caps. So now the caps are discharging. I understand that. That's fine. So I'm not at the point right now where I can charge super caps yet. Because when you have 500 ferrets there, what happens is if I hook it up to a power supply and charge the super cap with the power supply, it's going to be drawn about four and a half, almost five amps. Okay, so what I might have to do is have the capacitors and stages. This will be stage one, then it will go to another stage where it goes to a higher potential. And then stage three, eventually it will get to the super caps. Now the super caps is only 16 volts top, top power. These guys here can go as high as 63 volts because the capacitance is not that high. It flashes out before it even gets close to that. It's only about 28, uh, 29 volts. And then you get the surge flash. Power drops down to about 25 volts and then starts climbing rapidly again. Now, this could be used in a charging system. You do like cycle charging. So... It will build up its power and then it gets dumped into a battery bank. Something like that. So I think my key is, is to charge up a high enough voltage as possible in a smaller cap bank and then dump it into a larger source. Uh, either a battery medium or um, probably battery medium, I would say, because the battery is electrolytic. It's a chemical reaction. So I was, I was spiking 160 volts into a lead acid battery and it worked just fine. It wasn't blowing up. So maybe this might be the approach I might have to go. It would go from a smaller cap bank like I have here. I'll have to make a new cap bank and buy some capacitors and just set them up all in series, not parallel, in series. So you're going to keep about, well, whatever your caps are. So I would buy 50 or 60 volt capacitors and line up maybe 30 in a row in series. So they'll start charging one after another, one after another. And I think that's where it has to be in series because when you load up the first cap and it has enough power, then it starts dumping into the second cap. And then after the second cap, it dumps it into the third cap and so on and carries on. And I think that's what's happening in this situation. It starts with this cap, fills it up, and when it can't hold any more, now it starts dumping it into this cap. When this fills up, then it starts dumping it in this cap, and so on. And when it hits the last one, and when it fills the last one, that's when you get the surge. Because it has nowhere else to go. It has to come out. And that's how you get your surge. So, that makes sense to me. So my direction now is I've got to make a new capacitor bank that there's 63 volts. Like these ones here, I'm trying to check the actual size of them. Um, well, I got the large one there. That one is 63 volts at 2200 unifarad. So... Maybe if I were to get a whole whack of these guys and line them up. So actually, even better, I could probably go like small and then gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it fills up the last one. So that's also a possibility too. Now also when you get that flash too, that flash is a surge of current. 
and that current is what you need to charge an electrolytic battery. So if I can dump, say, a real high spike, say 30 volts at, say, 5 amps, that battery going to charge pretty damn quick. I'll tell you that right now. Now, because it's also being in a cycle and a pulse, um, it's not going to overheat the battery. It's going to be just a series of big dumps into the battery. So, yeah, um, I'll have to research more on this, but this was a kind of a similar scenario that I was having with the pulse motor uh, generator. You know, to, in order to charge a 500 ferret um, uh, capacitor bank like this, it takes a lot of current to do it. So I can charge this up if I want to, but I have to use a smaller cap bank to fill up fast. And when it fills up to a 30 volts, boom, it dumps and it's going to dump it into the uh, next set of capacitors, which would be the 500 uh, ferret bank. So I'm thinking that might be the way I might have to go. And it would have to be on a timer. So I'd find out, okay, um, I would charge these up to a certain point with the light. I know it hits flash point at 28 and a half volts. So I would have to time it in time with a timer circuit. And then right at that moment when it's got the peak voltage in it, it flips the switch and dumps it into the big bank. And then now it's going to get a surge of power going into that super cap bank. Because that super cap bank could technically run this system. So if I can charge these fast, dump it into the um, 500 uh, ferret ca uh, capacitor bank and sustain it, this system is now self-looped. It would never stop. So I think it, timing and how fast I'm able to charge these caps here and dump it into the bigger bank to sustain it. Because right now I'm running at, say, 9 volts at like just over a half an amp. That's not very much off this capacitor bank. That capacitor bank could probably pull about 25 to 30 amps if I do a big surge on it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It would be able to, it would be able to handle that. So, yeah... It's, it's work in progress, you know, like this stuff takes a while to do. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to plug away at it. And I think my next deal is I'm going to have to buy another perf board that's a lot larger and then set up a whole whack of these capacitors in series and get that capacitance up uh, to a point where I can actually use it in a pulsing charge scenario to charge up the big bank. And then from there, it goes to a charger or whatever, or run the system, loop it, you know. But anyways, uh, yeah. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, bottom right-hand corner, and uh, give me a thumbs up for the video, and we'll see everybody soon.